just double checking that you had the prompt. There you go. Sorry about that. I think my connection dropped briefly there. Okay, so we are going to get started. Um, yes, we are recording this session, and I'm going to ask you in our continuing interactions in the Q&A and also in the chat, kindly stay respectful. As always, we like to keep this a very friendly environment. All right. Now, I already briefed you today. We're going to be putting our minds towards 2023. So the year, we've just gotten a quick debrief on how the year has been business-wise. Some people said difficult, some people said tough, some people said sunny, okay? But either way, wherever you are, we know that all of us as SMEs, we are thinking in terms of 2023, how do I position myself to be successful there? We have a great speaker with us. She is absolutely fantastic. And she's one of those people who can speak into strategy. She can speak into systems and projects and so much more. So it's going to be quite amazing, right? But before we get into that, I want to just I'll ask you, did you know, <clears throat> when it comes to this idea of strategy, did you know that only 2% of businesses are confident that they will achieve 80 to 100% of their strategic objectives? Just curious to know, okay? So only a pint of people are confident. Now, I'm very curious, what makes these people confident? And today, perhaps we can find out some of those things so that all of us join that group of people who are confident about the results that we can expect to see in the coming year. All right. So before we get further into that, I'll reintroduce myself. My name is Sam Chimera. I am part of the AMI family, and I will be and continue to be your facilitator or moderator in these sessions weekly. Um, with us is also Peter Ndumia. He's the head non-financial services, apart from the uh, Corp Bank. Today, he couldn't be with us, and he definitely misses that. But we also have Fiona Maina, project coordinator. She's with AMI but does a lot of coordination between AMI and uh, CoBank to make sure this particular session happens every week to make sure you get the value that you're looking for in you for your business, but also to get to make sure that you connect with your bank in a meaningful way where you can get answers to the questions that you have and we can see our businesses grow, All right? Now to do the bit about CoBank, I want to invite Fiona who will be standing in for uh, Peter. Uh, Fiona, welcome. Uh, yes, there you are. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, and thank you for kind of bringing our heads um, to think about the future. So um, I'd like to welcome all of you onto this webinar series. Like Sam mentioned earlier, we have been doing this webinar series every Thursday from 11 to 12.30. And we're always happy to have all of you come in and learn. AMI, and Cop Bank have partnered so that so that um, we can help you and your businesses grow and equip you with proper skills and tools. Now, um, when we started these sessions, we started with finance, getting your heads right and your businesses right towards uh, around the topic of finance, and then we went on to sales and marketing, so that you can be able to market. Um, your products and your services well. Now, as Sam said, and now is the best time to prepare. So we will be focusing on strategy for the, for these next few Thursdays until the end of December. And we will hope to see you coming in over and over again so that you are able to be uh, to grow and thrive in your businesses. So thank you, Sam. And welcome, everybody. <laughs> All right. Very good. Thank you so much, Fiona. Okay. Um, also, you will be hearing from Fiona. Um, we've been having these sessions for quite a number of, 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 uh, of Thursdays. And at the end, we want to just invite your feedback. So we'll be sharing some contact information. How are these sessions going? Is it working for you? What would you like us to change? How can we improve so that we can serve you better? That's our goal. And that's what we, we strive to achieve. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about AMI. So this is a collaboration 
we have people who are here for the first time and people who've been here for, with us for a couple couple of weeks, but we don't take it for granted. So that's COP side. And let me let you know a little bit about AMI. Okay, so AMI is African Management Institute, and we are focused on enabling ambitious businesses and entrepreneurs across Africa to grow, to thrive. How do we do that? We do it by providing practical tools and training. We have presence in about 39 countries across Africa. There's lots of people who have been trained, 37,000 plus, and we are heavily on the digital side. So we have uh, digital platforms that we help, that we provide access to. And we have content in about four languages, lots of tools, 3,000 plus, and we're super proud of the work that we're doing, obviously. Now, there's something that we're always keen to do. We want to share an opportunity with those who are here, okay? So you're an SME and you're interested in growth. There's something called the Grow Your Business Program. Now, we're doing an, there's an opportunity for full scholarship. And I just want to walk you through, should you be interested? Let me walk you through some of the elements in that program. And if you're interested in any of these pieces, then I'm going to give you a link after this so you can use the link and talk through with your team and apply for it. Hopefully everyone gets the access to the full scholarship. So one of the aspects is six phases. So it's a six month, six to seven months program. In the first month, we look at planning and money. How do you get set up for growth? In the second month, we are focusing on growth. How do you, it's not just about the vision. How do you make sure your team is rallying behind it? So a bit of a leadership aspect there. In the third month, we're thinking customers. Customer is king. How do you make sure you take care of your customers so that they are loyal? How do you make sure you figure out, is my customer the same? Has that segment changed? Do I need to segment my market a bit differently? What does that look like? In the fourth, we look at money. What? Okay, so cash is king. Well, we look at money. How do we make sure that we are tracking our profitability drivers? So financial analysis and that sort of thing. We look closely at those figures. And then number five, we look at talent and operations. We strongly believe in this particular program, and we will learn if you get in, that um, operations are the key to success, okay? So it's huge key to success because it has to be a combination of the people and the processes and operational systems that you have. That's how we, let, we lead to productivity. And then lastly, we come back to this idea of planning and sustainability of the progress that you've achieved. A bit like this conversation in terms of mid-term, short-term, and also long-term, what does that look like? Okay, at the end of this program, um, should you succeed to get to the end, and we trust that everyone will, there's the opportunity for networking. So we have this thing called the growth network, which is a combination of all the successful learners from all the programs that we've done across Africa. Huge pool from South Africa, from uh, Kenya, Uganda, Zambia, um, Nigeria, across the whole uh, spectrum of countries within Africa. So. That's a huge opportunity, and I hope that you can maximize that. Okay, so this is what the program looks like. It's called Grow Your Business, or we like to call it GYB. There's full scholarships available, and I believe there's a link in the chat right now. I think Fiona will be sharing a link. Oh, yes, there you go. So there's a link in the chat. Uh, there's a link in the chat. I hope that you can access that. As soon as you get that link, you can just copy it and put it aside. So do me a favor and do that, and then type yes in the chat. As soon as you type yes, then I know you've got the link and we can move on to today's session, all right? Are you good with that? I'm just waiting for a couple of people to type yes in the chat and then we should be good to go. So I've just gotten a few and that's absolutely fantastic. I trust that others have as well. So look into that, it's an opportunity. You will just fill in that form and then submit it and, and I trust that all of you will have the opportunity to maximize this Grow Your Business program. All right. So now to today's business, okay? Today, like I mentioned, we're talking strategy, okay? We are thinking in terms of um, how has this year been? How do we position ourselves for next year? I'm showing you the slide. We have a wonderful guest. Her name is Terry Hiruki, okay? Now we're having this conversation yesterday with Terry and trying to figure out how can we provide the best value for our people? We know that you're already thinking about 2023 and we're trying to figure out how can we provide the best value? Some of us find this strategy aspect easy because you have done it so many times. Others are extremely nervous and you're just confused. Everyone talks strategy, but when it comes down to it, what does it mean really? You know, like we like to say really. Anything then you add really, then you're really asking, simplify for me. 
and there's no better person to do that. But before I invite Terry, I'm going to use a poll, okay? I'm going to use a poll and I'd like you to, to respond to this poll. So just one question. The question is, how do you feel about your business in 2023? So for next year, when you think about your business for next year, what's the feeling? Are you super confident? Are you confident? Not super, but confident. Are you unsure? Are you anxious? Okay, where you're like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We're in the middle of November. You're biting fingers. And of course, of course, on the outside, you're trying to look calm and stable, but internally, you know how you feel. Or can you honestly say, you know what, Sam? I have no idea what's going to happen. 2023, Aki, I, I don't know. And I'm dreading it. Okay, so let me give you uh, very good, very good. Thing. And I, I must appreciate, thank you so much for your honesty. Very, very good. Okay. So let me allow for a second or two for us to do that. And then uh, I'll, I'll be inviting our, our speaker shortly. Okay. Very good, very good. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So we are at about 50%. And it will be very interesting to hear from Terry what, uh, what she thinks about, about uh, the response that we've just gotten. Okay. I'm sure she's uh, preparing her thoughts on that. So I see quite a number of us are confident. Genuinely, some of us are unsure. Some of us are anxious. A few are super confident. Okay, very good. Now, maybe as you finish, I'll tell you a little bit about our speaker today. So Terry is Terry has done many things. Okay, so she likes to be on ground, but she's also the kind of person you can put in a room and you speak about strategy. Some of her core skills are looking at strategic planning, um, construction, she's been in construction. It's quite interesting as I, as I researched, I don't know if Terry will expect me to know this or not, but uh, I believe her first uh, inter internship position was at a construction site. So you can imagine this lady at a construction site, feet on the ground, hands digging in, working very hard. And over the last couple of years, of course, she's been from, so be, I'm just giving you that to show you she's been on ground, but also she speaks at a strategic level. And she also is in charge of projects and, and is great. She likes to refer to herself as a systems builder. So at this point, I want to ask you, I'm gonna stop the poll, okay? And now at this point, I want to ask you to please use your emojis or your clap or whatever you can do, type in the chat. Please welcome with me. Uh, welcome with me, Terry, who is our speaker for today. All right. As, Terry, I hope that you appreciate these uh, claps and the hearts yes. and all these different things that are going up. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm tempted to read more of your, of your resume here, speaking about how you, you are into customer service, project management, you're passionate about equipping people, uh, the leadership piece. There's so much to you. In fact, I should just probably just turn it to you and say, Terry, yes. with all the things that you've achieved and uh, all the work that you do with Emerge and other organizations, how would you describe yourself to someone who's just meeting you today? Yeah, sure, definitely. So first of all, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to see um, all the people who, who are joining us today um, and, and the diversity of their experience and the industries that they're in. So it's such a pleasure to be here, um, such a pleasure to um, speak with you um, and, and, and kind of start this conversation around strategy. Um, so yes, like Sam rightly put it with a lot of kind words. <laughs> uh, my name is Terry. Um, like you rightly said, um, my initial background in, in, in my career was in construction. So I started my career earlier on um, in construction and then slowly kind of started moving towards the business side of construction. Um, so why it is that actually kind of started falling in love with the whole um, idea of leadership development um, strategy um, and, and, that, and that kind of thing. So um, was in construction um, for a while um, and, and did a lot of um, project management and development management. Um, so development management is a side of construction um, where you do business cases, um, feasibility studies, um, trying to evaluate whether um, real estate projects are going to be profitable and, and kind of starting to make those strategic decisions around um, what project are you going to get into, where is it going to be located, um, what, how, how is that going to um, kind of be, be put together in order to be able to maximize the land value and maximize the investment. Um, and then I transitioned. So um, I and then I transitioned into um, 
management consultancy um, out of con con construction. So it, it was an interesting transition. Um, quite but the a, more, a wide one. Yes, but the more I worked, um, the more I worked with people, um, the more I, I, I fell in love with um, the just you know growing leaders and growing capacity. Um, and so while working in management consultancy, um, worked a lot with different organizations um, around um, leadership development capacity building strategy, um, execution, um, customer service, um, ex and the, the whole array yeah, yeah, of yeah. all the elements that kind of help businesses to be able to optimize um, their effectiveness and their productivity and their profitability. Um, and then um, re very recently now, um, transitioned into the nonprofit space. Um, so I currently um, work with an organization that does the same thing I used to do in corporate. Um, but now what we do is we, be, we, we bring um, the best um, leadership development and entrepreneurship um, knowledge at grassroots level, um, because I believe that everyone um, deserves the opportunity to get um, the skills, um, the mindsets, the motivations that are required to help them to succeed and to be whole people. And, and, and that's a combination of um, thriving in terms of your livelihoods or in your business, um, but also being able to thrive in terms of just like ex working and existing in your space of um, passion. So that's, that's, that's what I do now. Um, so I, I yeah. work in the communities now um, with a Fantastic, lot of yeah. um, individuals who are just starting their entrepreneurship journey. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, in, in an in main words, that's, that's who I am. Um, I'm delighted to be well, here, Sam. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm definitely glad that you have this vast area of experience because in the call, some of us here are people who are just starting out. Others have been doing this for a while. And then, of course, you have others who are a lot more advanced, lots more, ex more experience. They have bigger teams, bigger organizations, but they are all here and they are eager to see how we can move the business forward. So today we're talking strategy. Okay. Now I'm just going to go ahead and jump in. Okay. Uh, sorry, before I jump in, let me just structure, just communicate what the structure is going to be. So um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be having a conversation with Terry. It's just going to be really conversational. So we're not going to uh, uh, kill you with slides today. <laughs> We're going to just be having a conversation. I'm going to be asking Terry a couple of questions regarding strategy, but also I'm keen, I'm keen to see what questions you may have for Terry. So if you have a question around strategy, around the next year, what does next year look like? What can I do? Uh, to What can I do in the next couple of weeks to position myself well for next year? That sort of question. If you have a question, any specific, put it in the chat. I will come to it. So we're going to have a question, uh, a conversation for about 15, 20 minutes, okay? And then from there, we will uh, turn to the questions and take about uh, five, 10 minutes of questions. So 15 minutes here, and then five or 10 minutes for your questions. So please make it very direct, very succinct, so that I can ask the question and we get some help, right? Now, let me start by asking, uh, Terry, would you comment on this poll here? I don't um, know if you can see it on your screen. Yes, I can. Um, so first yeah. of all, like encouraged to see um, a really high percent of people um, feeling super confident and confident about the new year um, and that's amazing because um, all of you have whatever it takes um, to to make the next year successful um, and 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 it all begins from just believing um, that you have what it takes um, whether you're working as a, an individual um, all by yourself in your company or you have a team um, but also um, completely recognizing that it can be anxious to think about the new year, especially looking at um, the current economic climate. Um, and, and I completely understand and relate with the fact that um, the business environment has been very kind the last couple of years. Um, and mm -hmm. kind of just looking at, at the current economic climate, um, it might get a little bit harder before it gets better, um, but really encouraged to see that um, so, so many people um, are confident about um, their businesses, are confident about the new year, and, and that's exactly the right place to start. Yeah. Um, and also, um, yeah, um, completely recognizing um, that there are a couple of us um, who are still at that place where the last year might not have been very kind um, and as such a bit unsure and anxious about the yeah. new year, 
Um, the last couple of years, that, yeah. Yes, um, this conversation and, and even um, as we kind of start closing this year and, and um, planning for the next year, um, that people are going to start feeling more and more confident um, mm -hmm. about the, the, the business and about the new yes, and about yeah. all the opportunities mm -hmm. um, that exist. Um, yeah. Okay, very good, very good. So let's let's jump in. Let me uh, stop sharing this. Um, let's jump in. What is business strategy and why is it important for us as entrepreneurs? Right. Um, but what, great question. Um, and, and today I want to really try and demystify um, yes, the term strategy. Because a lot of the times when we hear the word strategy, we think, um, yeah, gurus and, you know, this. Uh, there's one. a man on the mountain somewhere. Yes. Come up um, with a 20 year plan. <laughs> exactly. Um, that when you have the right statement and you have the right strategy, your business is going to succeed and it's the silver bullet. Um, yes. that makes it all possible, but also kind of makes it a bit unachievable and unattainable. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would really just like by, to start by just demystifying um, what strategy is. Um, and, and, and to kind of just um, start by um, um, a few, uh, three key definitions um, that kind of are the backdrop of, of strategy. Um, and that's um, mission and vision. Um, so when we think about the organization mission, um, that's basically where you exist um, as an organization. And then when you think about the mission, it's um, it's the picture of where you're going. Um, it's the destination. Um, it's 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 you're there as an organization. It's it's where you hope your organization is going to get to. Um, so if you think about um, your vision, um, one of the things even before you you, you get into um, strategy, one of the things that every business um, needs to be able to do is um, get clear as a business leader and then and get other clear. So what does that mean? It means um, really understanding and painting a very clear picture of where it is um, that you need to go because that always comes before um, a, the conversation of strategy. And so um, once that is in place um, and you have um, a vision or a, like you, you have a very clear picture of there, where it is that you want to go um, and, it, and, and, and your vision to be aspirational um, and it needs to require a big stretch. Um, whether it's for you as a business owner or for your business. Um, and so once um, that is clear and you're very clear, so first of all, you need to ensure that you're clear and you've got to your people clear. So what strategy is, is basically just how you're going to get there. Um, so here is, is where you are right now as of today in terms of your business, um, your vision, you're there is where your business um, where you, you want your business to get to in terms of your, your, your um, aspirational stretch vision. So strategy is simply how you're going to get there. It's your steps from where you are, which is you're here, um, to you're there. Um, and so when, when we start getting now into um, conversations of having like strategic statements and strategic goals, um, all they are are the efforts of improvement um, that are designed to significantly improve your organization um, and move it forward. Um, and so what, what that means is as, as an organization, once you're, you're clear on where your vision is and you're clear on um, your, how you're going to get there in terms of your steps. So your strategy then becomes, when you look at all the steps um, that are required to kind of get your, your vision there. So if you, if you start to look at like those, those steps or those activities or those um, goals that are kind of get your organization to where it needs to be, you'll find that um, they usually fall into categories. Um, that those activities um, that are a stroke of the pen decision. And so what that means is um, all it requires is you, you need to have the money and you need yeah. to have the to make it happen. So for example, yeah. um, if you're a business, a stroke of the pen goal or decision is we are going to move our location um, from Sika Road to Kirinyaga Road because that's where majority of our businesses are. It does not require a lot of things. It just requires they need to have their money. I have the authority. It moves. Um, so there's that. Um, so that's that's one category of strategic decision. And then there's another one that um, there are other goals that require behavior change. Um, so these are the ones that are going to involve getting, especially if you're an organization that has a team, whether that's a team of three to ten to fifteen. Um, yeah. um, those are the kind of goals that now require and involve and and kind of require you to get other people involved. 
Um, so, and, and this might be things like um, getting your sales team to become more consultative. It might look like things like um, getting your customer service, yes, to be more interested in creating genuine and authentic connections with their customers or with your customers. So like those are the two categories um, that we kind of group um, strategy into. So you'll find, so as you begin to describe what's how you're going to get there, what are your steps from here to there, um, you'll find that there are those ones that will kind of fall within stroke of the pen decisions and there are those ones that um, kind of begin to fall under behavior change and, yeah. and require like organizational um, effort and, and everybody to kind of be aligned and start working yeah. towards um, those goals. Um, so yeah, that is that is how I would describe what strategy is. There are those efforts mm -hmm. of improvement designed to significantly move the organization forward. I like, I like that. I like especially just to reoccur what you I'm just taking, taking so many notes and you're speaking so fast. So I'm trying to curiously write down things. So I, I like I like the simplicity of we are here. So it's important to know we are here, wherever here means. What does that mean? Maybe it's it's location-wise or it's growth wise or it's whatever the situation is and we need to do it's the leader's responsibility to define there so we're here we want to go there where is there and the responsibility we have as leaders is to one be clear on where we are going and then get others clear right exactly very good so so what, what else would you say about how do you, how you use that strategy towards growth like this growth, because all of us want to go towards growth. What's your what are your thoughts around this? Um, so I think I think what what I, I, I how I would answer that is by kind of like looking at a framework in terms of all right. So what what does that practically um then look like? Um, so in terms of um, so I, I'm assuming that you have a business. Um, you have a clear vision. Um, you have a clear there. Um, you have clarified very simply in a way that like your organization or your team um, also understands where it is that you're going. Um, they understand their contribution um, to where it is that you're going. One of the things that I encourage a lot of organizations to do is create a vision statement. Um, so a vision statement is a simple um, statement um, that needs to have that needs to be measurable. So it's something that anybody in the organization at any given time, if you ask them like where it, where is it that we are going, um, they will easily be able to tell you this is where we are going. Um, so um, as as so that's that's one of the things I would encourage um, organizations to do um, is to create a vision statement, which can become like the company or the organizational mantra that really helps people to be able to. Um, understand um, and, and keep, and it kind of becomes your true north as an organization in terms of yeah. this is where we're going. Um, and that also kind of allows everybody in the organization to be able to understand their contribution um, in terms of like the direction that you're going um, and to begin to volunteer their best efforts. And I, I like to use the word volunteer um, because when, when, when employees are checking into the organization, um, it's, 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 it's always, I think it's every business owner's desire to kind of move from managing people in terms of job description um, to begin to have engaged and engaging employees who care about um, the vision of the company yeah, and want to contribute to that. Exactly, um, exactly. So that's that's where I'd, 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 I'd start. And then so when, when you start coming now to um, beginning to look at, okay, so what, what are those steps from here to there as an organization? Um, right. and, and that can start by doing an audit. Um, and when doing that audit, I like to look, I like to look at like four key areas. Um, so one of those areas is the team capability. Um, so team capability effectiveness basically means um, looking at what do you do best? What does your team do best? Um, and where are the gaps? And as you look at that, um, there are a couple of questions um, you can begin, there are a couple of guiding questions that can help you to then um, be able to evaluate your team's capability. Um, and so that's looking at, do you have the right people in your organization? Um, and then with those people who are in the organization, if they're the right people, do they have the right skills um, to right. get the job done? Um, and if they do, are they doing the right work? Um, so you kind of beginning from there and, and really evaluating your team. Um, and then looking at you as an organization, do you have the right roles and responsibilities in place for the right 
people to be able to get the job done. Um, and then looking at um, things like now the compensation, are people um, compensated and rewarded in the right way? Um, do they have the right tools? Um, how do you as an organization celebrate success and recognize um, you know, good behavior or employees who are, who are doing a really great job? So those are some of the things that you kind of, as you're auditing um, right. team capability, these are some of the questions that could kind of help you begin to and identify. So, so this okay, so. essentially, would you say essentially this helps us to figure out where are we now? Sort of like yes, exactly. Where are you are here? Exactly. Let's define like this. Exactly, we are defining here. So we are auditing yeah. and we're kind of just trying to define where we are. And as we're defining where we are, we're trying to figure out okay, so what what are we very good at? Um right. and looking at where we need to be, where are the gaps and, and kind of beginning to identify, okay, so these are the gaps. Um, and so like I was saying, um, I, I like to look at it in four key areas um, in an organization. So one is team capability. Um, another one is customers. Another one is business processes. And another one is um, bottom line or what we call profitability and business context. Um, so yeah, so I kind of talked about like some of the how you can be able to then um, evaluate your team capability then when we come to customers um we are looking at internal and external customers so a lot of the times when we talk about customers we think uh, people yes. who are coming to service or your goods or your product as an organization but one thing that we usually um forget is we have internal customers um, and one of our key internal customers is, so if you're, if you're here and you're the business leader, um, one of your key internal customers are your employees because they are buying into your vision and they are contributing their best efforts mm. to make that vision come true. Um, if you're here and you are an employee and might not necessarily be the business leader, um, the business leader then becomes your customer. So it's looking at um, your customers in that perspective and, and beginning to think about um, how can your organization make it easy for people to do business with you? So you can look at your um, mm. external customers, for example. Um, currently, would you define it as, is it easy for, your, for people to, to do business with you? Um, what are those, what are maybe are some of those challenges? And one of the ways you could do that is you could do a survey. Um, you could, um, yeah, ask people to give you feedback. That, that, that's some of those ways that you, you kind of begin to start looking at. Um, how can we improve customer loyalty? How can we drive up um, custom, our customer experience and make it more excellent? And then the mm. other thing within um, kind of that audit of looking at where we are is beginning to look at business pro processes. Um, and business processes is now looking at within your organization, is work getting done in the right way? Um, and in terms of your processes, are they simple? Are they visible? Are they consistent? Um, and, and as you begin to look at that, then you can begin to identify um, some of the things that are gaps and you can begin to identify what you do very well. And lastly, is looking at profitability and business context. So profitability basically means, um, I think that one is usually the easiest to think about because it's, Numbers. it's where the money is. And, 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 and then, yes, that's what a lot of business people focus on. Um, but yeah. it's intentional also that have brought it last because that is carried by all the other yes, three. I see that. <laughs> When you take care of the other three, it tends to automatically um, drive up um, your profitability as a business. However, even as you look at your profitability as a business, it's important to also look at the business context. Um, what's happening around your business? Um, what are the trends that are kind of um, beginning to take shape? Um, what, who are your competitors? I mean, it's also intentional that I brought it last because um, it's, it's important to like really... Um, understand what it is that that makes your business um tick and 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 kind of like looking at your business from the inside out as opposed to allowing a lot of the external and outward um influences to influence what you do internally because a lot of the times you tend to to begin to lose your true north and you tend to then yeah. begin to be swayed a lot by what's happening and so you find organizations where their strategy is going to be driven a lot by what's happening outside um so people are mm -hmm. moving digital all right so our strategy this year 2023 is we're moving digital everything without on the first looking at your organization and what is it that actually makes um your organization what it is and what is it that you do well so beginning with the three and then kind of now um finishing with the last one so that's that's how i would kind of yes define here and 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 so from the the 
the things that come out of that exercise, um, the things that are come out as gaps, um, the things that are going to come out as challenges, there are things that are going to come up as opportunities that you're beginning to identify as you are doing that exercise. Um, and like I mentioned before, there are elements that you will find are stroke of the pen decisions and the elements that you will find um, kind of fall within like behavior change. Um, exactly. So usually what I encourage people to do is start just by a clean sheet of paper. Um, if you can do it with a few people from, from your White leadership board. team, yeah. exactly. And kind of just get everything out there. Don't think too much whether it's right or wrong. It's important. It's not kind of just like start by putting everything down and then begin to now be refine that list and looking at, all right, so we have all these things. Um, so what is the most, and, and so, so, um, as you narrow it down, um, you kind of begin to select the most critical goals. Um, and you can look at the most critical goals that either threaten your business the most, or that have yeah. the, business, the biggest opportunity for growth. So you kind of begin to um, narrow that down. So step one is where you kind of put everything together. Um, step two is where you begin to narrow it down to a few um, good candidates. Um, and then you, so you keep refining that. And then usually most people, by the time um, you've kind of refined it completely, uh, you find most people have like about seven to 10 key uh, focus areas. Um, however, um, for your strategy to be effective, um, there's, some, there's, there's a study um, that was done by Franklin Covey where they studied, I think, around um, 30,000 businesses. Um, and, and one of the things that they found was um, the fact that for organizations that had like one or two strategic goals that they, they were, they were um, focusing on, focusing usually on, yeah. they, were, they were able to achieve one or two goals. For organizations that had three to four goals, um, that would then reduce and they were only able to um, achieve one goal. For organizations that had um, five to up to 10 goals, usually they, they never achieve any goal. And that's the law of diminishing returns. Um, so one of the things that then you need to do as a business is um, focus on the most important goals. Um, and, 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 and there's a book that I would encourage everybody here to read that's called um, The Four Disciplines of Execution. Um, brilliant book. Around just understanding strategy, understanding execution. I um, mean, there's something they call the, um, there's something they call wildly important goals. And so that means when you look at your list of ten, look at okay, so which one is the most urgent, and that's what we are going to start with. Um, and and that's going to then become your your wildly important goal. And as you're setting up that goal for your organization, um, it should never be more than two. I'm highly encouraged to just have one because when you have one, you're able to focus, you're able to okay. achieve it. Um, and, and, and kind of now have it in, in the format of X to Y by when. This is the thing we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. This is the target that we're working with. That becomes your strategic focus as an organization for that period of time that you think um, you're going to be able to achieve your, your um, wildly important goal. Um, important and goals, so yeah. I, I have talked a lot, but I, I believe in, <laughs> in that narrative. <laughs> no, it's really good. Have, have no, 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 it's, it's really good. I'm going to take the, the, the responsibility of just kind of backtracking just in case someone may have missed. As others are asking, what's the name of the book? The name is called, the name is Four, Four Disciplines, Disciplines of Execution. Of execution. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the, the person who wrote did that, but it's, it's like, was it Franklin Covey still? No. Yeah, it's, it's, yes, it's, it's, by, it's by Sean Covey. Um, uh, I, forget, I forget the second person's name, but yes, okay. it's okay. brilliant around execution. So Covey, Strategy okay. and execution, so, yeah. Four disciplines of execution. So just to backtrack, I really love that we're simplifying it down to when it comes to strategy, it's we're moving from here to there. Define here, define there, then strategy is everything in between. And what we started from describing what you've just been walking us through is how do you establish where you are here now? I mean, it's mid-November, it's come to the end of the year, I think of next year. Key areas to look at, which you said we need to look at an audit, we need to look at what's the team's capability. We need to look at the customers, internal and external. And I really liked that piece. I wanted to talk about that, but I may not have time. Then there's also uh, looking at the business processes. Are they simple? Are they visible? Are they consistent? For the customers, how can we make it easy for people to work with us, whether it's our employees or the people who are buying from us the service or the product? And lastly, profitability. And intentionally, saying the last we should think of is profitability. I wanted to double click on that. 
what is the danger of starting from profitability? Because normally that's where we start. Like this year we made X amount of shillings. Next year we want to make times two move, and then you whip everyone into that direction. What's the danger of that to the to the business? Would you comment on that, Terry? Um, yeah, sure. Um, and th the danger is you begin to look at the symptoms. Um, and a lot of the times you're going to have like band-aid solution without without really being able to identify what are the root causes. Um, because culture, and, 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 and that's one of the statements that I really like, culture will always eat strategy for breakfast. So if you don't have the right culture and, and, and processes in place, um, it doesn't matter how brilliant your strategy is. It doesn't matter how intellectual you are as a business owner and how well you are able to craft um, your business strategy. But yeah. a lot of the times when that happens, um, you will find yourself um, living out the Sisyphus lifestyle. And, 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 and Sisyphus is, is that ancient God who was um, kind of, I think, cast to, you know, roll this rock up the mountain and it kind of keeps talking back. So you will, as a business leader, you'll always feel like, you're, you're always like pushing, you're working, this, you're working extremely working hard, but not really hard to push this rock, but it keeps kind of rolling back. And that's because right. a lot of the times you haven't put the necessary things in place um, to begin to be able to support your, your business. Exactly. I want you also to talk about why is it so important to pick one or two points of focus? Because right now we may be thinking sales. I mean, like even when it comes to strategy, there's marketing strategy. I need a digital strategy. I need a business strategy. I need a customer strategy. I need all sorts of strategies. But you're saying we need to focus on one or two areas. Why is it so important? Um, yeah, and 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 so that's that's what that's um, I think in psychology they call it the law of diminishing the return. Um, and and I like something that Apple say Apple um, said um, and and they said um, the 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 their organization is never short of amazing ideas, um, and there are many amazing ideas of how they can grow. Um, but one of one of the most um, essential skills as a business owner and as a leader is the ability to be able to say no to good ideas. Um, in order no. to be able to focus on the most strategic ideas. Um, because the truth is, when you try to focus on too many things, um, you're not going to be able to achieve either of them. And so you're going to have a team um, that is working really hard, um, but a team that doesn't win. Um, and, and, and one of the things is, I, I, um, I, how of one of the ways that we describe a healthy organization is an organization where um, all your people, including yourself, feel like they are valued members of a winning team, in an environment of trust. And so the aspect of winning is also very important for an organization because yeah. it becomes the catalyst um, that kind of gets people- It's the, it's the law of momentum. Exactly. Um, it, it kind of like sets momentum in place. And so that's why it's very important um, to be able to look at all these brilliant and wonderful ideas and just being able to say no to all these wonderful ideas and focus on one, that you believe at that point in time is going to be the most strategic decision for you. Um, right. and, and one of the things that is, um, even as you even as you're setting up your strategy, why it's important to kind of have that X to Y um, by when um, approach is all of them are time bound. So in this period of time, the thing we might be focusing on the most um, might be customer loyalty, not might be because that's the thing that threatens your business the most. But um, yeah. achieving customer loyalty as a business may take you seven months. So that might be your strategic focus for seven months. And then after that, it has already kind of gone in, gotten into your okay. company culture. And now it doesn't need to be something you focus on because now it's in DNA. Everybody now in the organization gets it. You pick something else, you focus on it. And that's, that's the process okay. of kind of um, getting something, um, narrowing your focus, um, doing it until it becomes right. um, part of your, exactly, part of your yeah, process, yeah. part of your DNA. And then now it doesn't need to be strategy because now you're doing it very well. And so you pick something else up. And, and, and so that's, that's why it's very important um, to be able to just focus right. on one maximum um, two most important goals at any given time. Yeah. Very good. I'm, I'm glad you answered that question because I was just about to ask, uh, there's a question here. Change is inevitable. How do you ensure your strategy evolves and adapts as well? And I think you've addressed it really well. Pick a point of focus, uh, conquer that. The, the win builds your, your confidence and also builds the confidence of the team. And then you, since you're tracking it, you know when you've conquered it, then I'll say, okay, so now let's turn our attention to what's the, the again, another the next biggest thing that, that will lead to our results. Okay, so so there's a lot to, to talk through. I want to turn my attention to, to the chat. 
There's lots of people who have put uh, questions in here and I want to check. Um, how do I strategize myself? For, okay, so Terry, this one's I need like quick fire. We're gonna have to do quick fire because there's so many questions. We have uh, several hundred people in the in the room listening. So Kristen Kenya is asking, how do I strategize myself for growth of my business within the first, uh, I think the first half of the year? What's, what are your tips around that? What can you say? Just real quick. Um, yeah, so I would say do that. Um, figure out where you are. Look at those key areas. Um, figure out like what is the one or two things that either threaten your business the most or give your business the biggest edge. Focus on that. Um, have your have have your goal to be, be very clear. Um, I want to go here. I'm going to do this by this date. Um, have everybody in your team understand it. And, and and then one of the things that I forgot to mention is accountability. So accountability is the, is the thing that now enables you to keep track. Um, and so building a cadence of accountability yeah. means you and your team are going to be meeting every week on Monday to look at how you're going and how you're doing with that goal. Um, so yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's what I would say. Okay. okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, Steven Buru is asking, he's thinking of uh, launching an online business. Okay. Uh, what would you advise regarding strategy when it comes to online business, launching an online business? How, uh, what are your yeah, would still advise you to go back, go back to the basics. Why is it that you you want to go into that business? What is your why? Um, where do you want to go? Do you have all the things? Do you have the capability that you need to be able to do that? So if you look at um, the skills and, and, and the things that are required for you to start an online business, do you have that? Um, if you look at the process, uh, the business processes that are required to um, create that platform, do you have that? Um, if you look at um, the customers, do they know about you? How are they going to know about you? And then from there, um, begin out to kind of now craft um, your steps to there. Okay. Okay. So, so it it still sounds like from here to there. To there. And your figure out step. where you here. These are the four key areas. I like that you've really simplified it. The four key areas that define here is what's your team like, what's the customers like, business processes for profitability. These are the four areas, and I guess by extension, it would mean define what there would look like. The ideal there would look like. Still, in terms of these four. Would you say? Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now I want to maybe with just one last one. Um, I think you've actually quite covered quite a bit. What would be your sorry, just give me a second. Let me look through the chat and I want to make room for like two other questions. Let's see. Um others are commenting on how nice this book is. Yes, it's quite brilliant. Um, let's see. Um uh, David was just, I guess. Oh yeah, is uh, is strategy? So someone is asking, is strategy measurable, and how do you typically measure? If you could yes, just make it, a quick yes. comment, has to be measurable. So that's what I'm saying. When you narrow down what your goal is, has to be measurable. And one of the ways to measure is having that X to Y by when. So this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm doing it. This is the timeline I'm working with. If it's not measurable, um, it's going to be very difficult for you to know whether or not um, you're achieving it. Yes. So it has okay. to be measurable. And then I guess to in line with that, you said you need to be able to say no to good ideas so you can maximize the great ideas. How do you define the two? Because many of us good are chasing good, good, good ideas. ideas and good ideas come in every morning, especially some of us are starting businesses on that criteria. Yes, that's a good question. How do you do the difference? Um, I don't know if I have a blanket answer. Um, I'll, I'll give some context, like in, depending on where you are, sometimes it's like, guys, everyone needs to be running this business. We need to grow X. We need to grow aloe vera. We need to grow whatever. And then, then six months down the road, guys, this is the thing. So we keep yes. like, how do you choose? Okay, we're mm -hmm. going to focus on this. All right. Um, so what, what, what I would say is um, when, when you have one to two goals that you're focusing on, um, it becomes crystal clear to you um, what it is that you're doing. And so whenever other ideas are coming in within the time frame that you're trying to implement your first idea, what I, what I, what I advise is put it on the back burner. And so when you're having, say, your monthly um, roundtable meetings with your team, it's then yeah. beginning to look at that and figure out, okay, so 
um, does if if this if beginning to look at this threatens the thing we are currently looking at, um, then that means it kind of maybe might need to sit in the back burner for another three months or for um, until the third quarter because then it becomes a distraction. So as good at it as it is, if it's becoming a distraction to the thing that you're trying to focus on at that period of time, and I believe by the time you're selecting that goal, it's because you have critically thought about all the elements of your business, um, and so it's sticking to that and as your true north during that period of time. Um, but as much as possible, if you can be able to create a space where you kind of like put all the things and put that back banner so that you're not forgetting about them. Um, but then when you're having your quarterly reviews, um, you can you then come back to, to, yes, to like, okay, are we ready for this now? If yes, how do we um, implement it? If no, um, maybe keep it and then we look at it in the next quarter. So just so that you're able to be able to focus on the thing that is most important. Okay. Very good. Terry, how do we reach you? You are a well of wisdom and you've just shared some tools. How do we access these? Someone is already asking, do you have some tools that you can share that we can use in our process of like reflection and going through this whole process? Is this something that you you, you can avail us? And also, um, I, how do we reach you? Uh, yes. That's the question. If, so, if that's so an if option. You, yeah, so if you can, you can put up my email. Um, so... I have a consortium of people um, that I work with, um, basically around um, strategy. It's one, two of the things that we, we work on a lot um, is capacity development um, and strategy. And, and, and in strategy, we look at both business strategy, um, but we also look at communication strategy. So those are, those are the two th key things that um, my consortium and I work on. Um, so it's myself and, and a couple of other professionals that have kind of come together and, and we do that together. Um, and so if this is a conversation that you'd be interested in, I would request Sam to maybe share my email and I will reach out to you. Does that work? Sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm my line cut. Sorry. So I was saying I will share my email if you would want to still yes, continue I the conversation. I um feel free to reach out okay very good thank you and, and and regarding the tools how can we get access to do you have some tools that you can share for this process Car so currently what what i would advise um if you can be able to get the four disciplines of execution amazing book um look at that happy to share that um with you if you need more um i would say reach out reach out through through reach out for the consult for the formal consultation We've already gotten enough uh, great freebies. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Terry. Please help me say thank you to Terry. Thank you, you. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you for volunteering your time um, to listen. Um, it was such an honor um, to be here with all of you this morning. Very good. Thank you so much, Terry. And that's Terry, who has been giving us a well of wisdom regarding uh, things to do with strategy and how to move from here to there. Very good. I hope that you've, you've benefited quite a bit. Now I want to turn my attention to our, our friends from COP. Okay, so our friends from COP are going to be sharing with us about something that they're offering. And we're going to be listening to Wilfred. Wilfred, who made the prayer today as we were starting. Wilfred Chirchir is a relationship manager, government support, COP bank, and he's going to be speaking to us concerning credit guarantee schemes. And also, as soon as it's going to take about five minutes or so, and then we will get into the Q&A. Some of you are already asking questions uh, regarding the bank. I know Edward had a question on Forex trading. Stephen had a question on some other things. Um, we're going to get to that. But first, let's listen to Wilfred uh, regarding credit guarantee scheme. Wilfred, uh, you're welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, good people. Uh, I want to say good afternoon. It's already afternoon. Uh, we have uh, last week, for those of us who are there, we shared our MSME solutions specifically for working capital. Uh, this, this week we will continue to, on that of, of part. We have a credit guarantee scheme, a loan called CGS. Uh, the government partnered with the banks and COP Bank was one of them. And they introduced uh, a loan uh, called the CGS, the credit guarantee scheme. Uh, this is a loan for MSMEs who are registered, and uh, we are going to go through the slides. Uh, the next slide, Sam. 
to access the loan, you have to be a MSME, uh, an MSME, that is a micro, small or a medium enterprise, who has the following criteria. You have to be a registered business and uh, the, our Kenyan laws. You have to have a business uh, reg uh, registration by the county and a valid permit. And lastly, you have to be a taxpayer. That is, you have a, to have a tax compliance certificate. Uh, those are the, the major features. The loan purpose is for MSMEs. That is, you, you can take the loan for, to boost your business. You can uh, take the loan in case you are in distress and your business has been affected by either fire or something like that will advance you the loan. You can also take the loan to acquire an asset. That is, uh, if you want to buy printers, if you want to buy a car, this is the, the, the kind of loan for you. The minimum limit for this loan is 1,000 and the maximum for now is 500. Uh, it was capped at five, 5 million, simply to ensure that uh, all the MSMEs get the access. We want to target as much as possible, many people as possible to, to earn these products. The tenure is 36 months, that's three years. And the interest is where the, the, the that is where now we, we come in here, it's 12.5. Unlike the others, which are 13, this is 12.5. Sam? Uh, the benefits of this, we call it CGS. Eh? The benefits of this product is we, we have uh, preferential interest rates. At 12.5, uh, this is the lowest in the market. Uh, we also have a first turnaround time of 24 hours. If you walk into the, our branches, uh, you apply, and within 24 hours, you get the decision. If you also have another benefit, if you also have a, another working capital loan with us, previously, you are told to clear the loan or pay it half to half. But now with this product, uh, you can come if you have another working capital uh, loan like uh, the other loans, uh, you can also be given this loan so that they can run concurrently. This loan also has very flexible and, uh, approval terms. You, you can come without security and if we look at the, how your account is operational, we can give you an unsecured one. If you have security, we'll also give you the loan. Sam, Sam, I will encourage you to be visiting our branch. We have relationship managers and bankers uh, on lo loan management so that we can be able to look at your business. We have a very vibrant branch network where we have a relationship officers who will be visiting your businesses or you come to the branch and we will be able to identify you and we will, you are now uh, be able to advance you the facility. Next, Sam. Very good. Yes, yes, Wilfred. So that's about the, the slides. Um, Wilfred, are you open to taking some questions? Um, oh yes, I'm open to taking some questions. Okay, okay, good. Um, so one, I'm, I'm really appreciating the fact that uh, we are connecting this because we're talking strategy and evaluating where we want to be next year. And Co Bank is giving us an option that we can maximize towards getting loans for next year. So, one, let me first ask before I get into the uh, the book. Um, does anyone have a question? Is there Grace? Okay, so Emma has a question. I want to ask to first start with the questions around the CGS that Emma, that Wilfred has just uh, presented to us. Uh, Emma has a question. Is there a grace period before one starts paying the loan, Wilfred? Yeah, the grace period is a. Uh... 30 days from the date of disbursement of the loan, 30 days, 30, 30 to days. 40 days, yeah. 30 to 40 days, you have grace period before you can start paying the loan. Um, um, a few of you are asking if this slide, these slides and the presentation will be available. So what we're doing is we're recording this session and the slides and everything will be, not the slides, but the, the whole flow will be available for you on the portal. I'm going to ask Fiona if you could kindly share with us the link. Um, the link for where you can retrieve this recording and all the other week's recordings, right? 
Um, someone else is asking about the limits as well. Let me go back to that. Um, if you have a specific okay. question about the limits, Christa. The limits, the limits, the minimum is 1,000 and the maximum is 5 million, not 500,000, 5 million. Yes. So that is, uh, yes, Molly Nowino was asking. So the minimum is 1,000, maximum is 5 million. Let me just check if there's any other questions and then we'll move to, to other. Okay, you're welcome. So you see in the chat, for those who are wondering about access to this information, this webinar, there's a link that Fiona has just shared and I'll ask her to just keep sharing that. Okay, so if there's, um, allow me to just check again, I don't want to miss any question, especially around the CGS. What does, um, okay, very good. Daniel is asking, what does my limit depend on? Okay. Your limits will depend on how the account has been operational. At least uh, your account should have been operational for six months. And if it's less than six months, you will come with a statement from the financial institution where you are from. Then we will be able to combine the two and, and create and check your limits. Okay. Very good. Now I'm just going to turn my attention to a few other questions regarding loans. Um, Robert Kamau was asking, do you also offer loans to farmers? Uh, he has a plan to drill water, but the money required is a bit crazy. Is that, what's the, what, what can you do for Robert Kamau as COPA? We do, we offer, we have a business department and even if he visits any of the nearest branches, we offer loans to farmers. Okay, very good. So I guess the invitation is engage with your branch manager, have a conversation. Oh yeah, yes, yes. Okay, okay, very good. Edward Makumi is asking, um, does COP offer Forex trading platforms? Yes, we do. Okay, and uh, what's the easiest way to start accessing that? Mm, the easiest is to, if you visit the branch, they, they will link you with our Forex department, and then from there you'll be able to start. Okay, very good. I'm just gonna have, uh, um, and Patrick Muita uh, says, I need to start an, to start a business, I think he says business, and he needs 30K. What are his steps to take? Mm, the, uh, the first step, uh, there, there are things to look at, but the best for him, the easiest for him is to visit the nearest branch. Then from there, you'll be accessed, you'll be uh, Access and then you'll be advised according, but you can be able to be advanced the money. So there's the opportunity, just uh, check with your bank and have a discussion. Yes. Right? Yes. Doris Mlagwa is asking Are there grace periods which are five months at least because of agricultural projects? I think I'm speaking from some in Agri, it actually needs a couple of months because sometimes the return doesn't, there are cycles. What is the consideration for someone in Agri? Okay. For, it depends on a case-to-case -case basis. It's not cast on stone that any loan is 40 days grace period. Let's say if you do construction loan, we'll give you a grace period of up to, up to the point you finish uh, constructing. During that grace period, you'll only be paying the interest of the amount that has been disbursed. After that, after, the, after con con completion of the project construction, now you start paying the loan. For Agri, we'll access the the, the structure of the facility, depending on how, when the, the funds will be available. So we'll give you a moratorium. That's the grace period. Very good. Um, I'm just asking as, as a person who is logged in as Nokia something, is the interest rate scheduled per month or per annum? The 12.5. Yeah. 12.5% is per annum. Per annum, the 12.5. Okay. Very good. So top right is per annum. I'm just going to check a few more questions. If you're just, uh, Samuel Nduva is asking, well, if you're just starting a business, can you access the CGS loan? Or is it for people who have already been in business for a while? It's and just, what, are, uh, what, are the, what, are the, what what else would you tell Samuel to look at? I would advise Samuel. Uh, it's for people who have been in business and especially been banking with us. So if you start, I would advise you to bank with us at least four months, you'll be able to access this facility. Okay, okay, very good. Samuel, I hope that's helpful. 
And uh, do you check CRB status? Oh, yes, we do. Okay. Would you want to say a bit more for, for junior sick? What does that look like? Okay, we do. Uh, just to accept, uh, to check on the credit worthiness of a person, but even if you are listed, it does not mean that we'll deny you credit. There are other parameters that may make you get listed, and it is on a case by case basis. So, if you we check and you are listed, we will advise you on what to do to get delisted, and immediately you get the facility. It's not that we we check it to deny; we check it for our own advice and to also to advise you. It's a bit of due, due, due diligence. Yeah, it's due diligence. Okay, very good. Faith and Dirangu is asking a question. Please give advice on LPO loan. On? LPO. LPO. Okay, if there is an LPO, if there is a listing going on, we'll, we'll, we'll provide a structure. Uh, we'll structure our facility to be able to target that LPO. So we, 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 we usually have it whenever there is an LPO we, and we advertise to our customers that this LPO is going on, we are, we are offering, offering a facility for the same. Okay. Okay. Very good. Masi, I think Masi and a few others, I believe, mentioned they are interested in financing assets, especially when it comes to car loans. What is the percentage you, you offer that? If you are in business and you take it under the CGS product, it will be 12.5% per annum. But mm -hmm. if you are not in business, like you want, you are, you are employed, you are employed, it's a personal loan. We have a pre-owned, we call it pre-owned car financing, whereby we finance you up to 95%. So we, we offer asset financing. Okay. Good. And again, would we'll this we, so we you notice um, everyone who's in the session? I hope you notice we keep link, linking it back to you cannot have a full conversation here in this space. You need to yeah. just pick your advice, but then go back to your to whole branch and have a branch. full discussion. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, Daniel is asking Omondi just for clarity. Twelve point five. The the rate that you mentioned is it on reducing balance or is it standard? It depends on the kind of, uh, if it's unsecured, it's flat rate. If it's secured, it's on reducing. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, Junior Fred Mbashe is asking, what are the, well, if, uh, first of all, uh, Wilfred, thank you so much for the fact that you're providing all these answers so quickly. I know that uh, at this space we're able to, to cover so much ground with uh, the questions coming. Junior Fred is asking, what are the qualifications of car financing? What's the criteria around that? Uh, I would like to know if, uh, but let me let me just take them. Eh? Yeah. Uh, if you are salaried, you will just need uh, three three months payslip and your employment letter. Then for that, we will offer ninety five percent. If you are in business, uh, you will contribute eighty percent for a used car. We will finance 80% for a used car. We will look at your account. If you don't have an account with, with us, you bring a one-year account from, from where you are banking, then we, we are good to go. Okay, Very good. Um, let me just uh, double check the other questions that are coming in here. So that's the qualifications. Uh, Junior Fred, I hope that, that helped you with the response. Um, I have a salary account with Core Bank, and I want to start a business and I get a working capital loan. That's Hussein Kiponda. You mentioned a bit about that, but if you could just touch on it again. For if you have a business and you want to start a work, uh, uh, you you have you, you want to start a business, mm -hmm. and you are a salaried. Yes. The best advice is I would I would advise you to take a personal loan with Cobb Bank, go start the business. Then as the business grows and, and as you pay the personal loan, we'll now come and access, uh, assess your business on, on, on how it's standing. Then from there, we'll, we'll give you a working capital loan. Very good. Um, we'll take um, about maybe two or Three other questions. Esther, uh, the loan conditions. 
loan conditions for for so, CGS? So, so no loan condition for she wants to get a school van, so that's a vehicle for business. Or oh, a school van. Yeah. If it's new, we finance ninety five percent. If it's used, we finance eighty uh, percent. To qualify, we'll just look at the statements. Uh, if a school, I'm talking. I'm talking uh, to now to about a school. We we'll yeah. look at the statements. If not banking with us, if banking with us, we look at the account operations. We we'll look at the school enrollment, and now the registration certificate of the school. Then we apply. For new, for new, I'll repeat. For new, for new vans, very new, we finance ninety five percent. For used, that is uh, seven years and below, eight years and below, we finance mm. eight. Very good. Esther, I hope that was helpful. Uh, should, you were asking about qualifications for financing an institutional van. That's what Wilfred has just addressed. I hope that's all well. Um, Godfrey was asking, maybe the last question, do you consider agents' accounts for CGS? Uh, I believe uh, he's talking about uh, agents like uh, a Kokwa Jirani agent. I believe what that is what she means. Yes. If uh, for an agent, I believe agency business is not her main business. She must have a business apart from that. She must be having an electronics and an, an agent. So we'll consider, we, we do consider. Very good. Wilfred, thank you so much. You have taken so many questions and provided the answers that we need. Do you have any other uh, top, uh, that you, top key information that you want us to remember, especially around CGS, just to remind us? Uh, what I want to tell the, 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 our clients, our customers here, is to visit our branches and ask specifically about CGS. The approval terms are really very smooth, and uh, we support the branches to ensure that they, they, they keep, uh, the, they, they, they accelerate the turnaround time about these products. So I encourage you, all of us, to visit branches and apply for this facility. Thank you. Very good. And of course, we, I'll just mention in addition, kindly keep engaging your branch and your relationship managers for more information to have a fuller discussion. But Wilfred, thank you so much. As usual, thank we're you. going to be appreciative. So please, please give a clap, give a clap with the emojis or put in the chat. Please say thank you, Wilfred. I think it's been really resourceful. Um, I'm glad you had all the answers that we needed today. It's very helpful. Okay, very good. So we're coming to the close of our session. Now, uh, we've been doing this for a couple of weeks now. I believe this is our 11th. Fiona has been our project coordinator. Um, for those who are wondering um, about getting access to, to, yes, thank you. So getting access to these webinars, there's a link in the chat right now. Please copy that link, keep it. You can get today's session, but also the weeks that have passed and uh, the weeks to come. So that will be available to you. All right, but right now we want to find out um, how is this going for you? So I'm gonna ask Fiona to come on video. She has one or two questions to ask and we'll be letting you know how we will be double checking with you on how these sessions are going. Fiona? Thank you, Sam. So um, uh, we thank you again for always joining us for these webinars. And I would love, love to hear what impact these webinars have had on you. Um, please drop me an email. I know a lot of you send me questions, requests on email, and I know I, and I, do, I, know I do my best to respond to you. So please um, give me your feedback on how the sessions have been, what topics you've liked the most, how they have changed your outlook and how um, it, it's changed how you operate in your business, and also um, what you would like to see in future sessions. So feel free to drop me an email and thank you again for always participating and contributing in the in the webinar. So thank you, Sam. Very good. So that's uh, uh, Fiona's contacts are on the slide. So project coordinator AMI Fiona at africanmanagers.org. I think Fiona, someone is clapping and appreciating you as well for the work that you're doing. So thank you for that. There's also a number for you to get in touch. Now, for those who are wondering how do I, I think there was one person was asking they're not in position to go to the bank physically. They're looking for a contact. This is your, your slide here. So you can talk to in, uh, the team at CoBank. There's a telephone number, there's a contact center numbers, there's email numbers, uh, email emails, 
and then there's a WhatsApp number. So please take this down. Maybe take, if it's easier, take a screenshot, depending on what device you're using or picture, this can be made available to you as well, All right? We also, we also want to just quickly remind you about the opportunity that there is with, uh, as we finish, we want to remind you about the opportunity that there is with AMI for you to be a part of, sorry about that, for you to be a part of uh, grow your business, interested in growing your business. They were talking about strategy, interested in growing your business in the coming year. Maybe you want to figure out how to plan better, how to manage your money better, how to lead your team better, how to run your operations and your systems better. There's a full scholarship opportunity. And I'm just going to ask uh, um, you and if you could kindly share that. Yes, there you go. So there's a link in the chat. It has the, uh, the, the that's the application link for this program. It's a full scholarship, but naturally um, the way things go is that these numbers are limited because we are unable to receive everyone. So I'd ask you to use that link. And at the end of the day, I hope that you will be able to get in and maximize. All right. So I want to say thank you so much for being here. It's exactly 25 past today. We are finishing just a few minutes before. I'm going to ask, I'm going to take the opportunity to call on a few people. So I see some hands raised. I think this was along the way. Um, Emma, I think, is it Emma Wanjiru? I see your hand raised. Did you want to make a comment? Um, I'm just going to ask you to, and I've allowed you to unmute your mic if you want to go ahead and do that, Emma. Um. Okay, thank you um, uh, for this insightful session. Um, I had a question for Terry. I don't know that she's still online. Oh, I believe she may have dropped off because she needed to attend to another meeting. Would okay. you share the question nonetheless? No, I, I was asking about what's a place of compliance in a strategy, and I wanted her to you know, to explain in details and possibly give examples. Um, yeah, so I had asked when she was still talking, but uh, well, I don't know what happened. My question wasn't picked. I had actually sent it in the chat. Yeah. I apologize, we're not able to cover all the questions, but what we're going to do is we're going to provide an email. Is that all right? Okay, seems like we've lost some. So, um, Emma, I would um, I have sent you Terry's email, and anyone who has questions for Terry, we can probably um, add. Um, um, you can email Terry on her email. I just put it on the chat. Feel free to reach out to her. Okay, so we see Alex as well. Your hand is up. Um, Alex, I will, I have asked you to unmute. So please feel free to ask your question, Alex. Hi. Hi. Oh, I have, I have lost. Let's, uh, there's a question I had asked there. Eh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know whether it's relevant to the topic you're discussing now. Amma, you are mm -hmm. the right person to answer this. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I needed to, I need, I was asked the question about uh, Talon. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you the best person to answer this? Um, no, I mm -hmm. am not. But um, we have Wilfred 
on the line. Mm -hmm. Wilfred? Yes, if you could if you could restate your question and Wilfred will respond. Okay, I was I was uh, I wanted an equality last time eh? uh, about uh, how how to the extent of which you you finance at that, uh, the parasitic that is the ex UK cars and the period payment period of the same eh? and the interest about about the same. Thank you. Uh, to answer you, ex eh? uh, UK. Uh, we look at the age, it should be less than eight, eight years. Uh, we check at how, the, how your account operational if you qualify. And also uh, the period is up to 36 months or 48 months, depending on the, the kind of car. For personal, it's up to 48 months. Repayments will be monthly. Are you answered? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's okay. Now, now because me, I have an account with a uh, with a uh, with a uh, but then, but then, yes. uh, it's not active so much active. But I have other account with other banks which are very active. Eh? So can you use can you use the same uh, record for other banks' uh, accounts to to, to yes to yes ascertain? even yes we use we use the other accounts even if you didn't have an account with Cop Bank, you came with a mm -hmm. statement from another bank. Mm -hmm. You will come, we, we open an account for you and immediately use the, the other accounts to access, mm -hmm. to check if you can qualify for the loan. If you qualify, we give you the loan. The finance, the finance percentage, how you will finance for 80? 80, finance 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 percent. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Right, very good. So it's right now, it's exactly the time where we need to be breaking off. So I want to say thank you so much for being here. I don't want to take more of your time than is required. So I want to say a huge thank you. If you've benefited from today, I'm going to ask you to use those emojis and uh, give us a reflection of that. If you're benefiting from this, I think we might consider sending you like a survey to just check with you on how much value you're getting from this. Every Thursday, if you were here for the first time, super, super welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, also, what we're doing is we every Thursday we come here, provide some value for you half the time regarding a particular subject we feel is very important for SMEs right now where they are. And then we get to hear also from CoBank and also address some of the questions that you've been having regarding loans, interest rates, or, and also other opportunities that the bank is willing and able to offer at this period. All right. Otherwise, I want to say thank you. Uh, Wilfred, you started us off with a wonderful prayer. I'm going to ask that you give us a closing prayer as well, and then uh, we'll drop off. Wilfred? Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, let's believe and pray. God, we come before you this morning. Uh, we thank you for this wonderful session. We thank you for the speakers. We thank you for our customers. God, continue by guiding them. As we go ahead and close the year, let's close strong, our oh Lord. Bless us for next year. Give us more opportunities, much more than we got this year. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. 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 And as soon as you type your amen, then you can drop off. Please type an amen in the chat. Uh, this is all the hard time for today. It's exactly the time to be dropping off. So thank you. Wishing you well. Looking forward to seeing you. We will continue our discussion on strategy. Okay. We've gotten quite a bit today. Next time we'll see how we can expand it and see how we can help with whatever challenges you may be having. Otherwise, have a good day. God bless and see you next week.